Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to wherever you are. Uh, we are back with another episode of our Kautilya podcast, India and the World. Uh, we are three common people who are living in three different parts of the world. And we just want to share our opinions and our views on what's happening, you know, across, you know in, in India and in, in, in the world. Uh, Manipur. A uh, lot has happened in Manipur over the last few months. Uh, we had coverage. We also had limited coverage. We had perception problem. We had something else going on in the reality. A lot of times we don't know what's really happened, but some of the recent events has really brought it to international attention as well. Um, BJP, I think, has missed the bus here and missed the trick here of stemming the violence which has happened, which has been happening for some time. And there's a history to it. It's not the first time it's happening in Manipur. So I have here Anant and Saurav, who are a little bit more tuned to this one than me. Uh, wanted to give us a perspective to all of us, including me. Ki Manipur mein hua, ho, ho, kya, ho kya raha hai aur kiski galti aur kya karna chahiye So Anant, over to you and then Saurav, you're welcome to add more uh, color, yes. color, to the, yep. color to this one. And interrupt me anytime you want. So I just put up this small uh, deck. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to cover on uh, what exactly is happening right now, what is leading to uh, the riots that are ongoing in Manipur, and what could be possible reasons, which probably the mainstream media hasn't covered so far. Okay, so that will be the focus of this very short uh, discussion. So let me look at the, if you start looking at the, the, the demographic divide in Northeast India, which you know nobody talks about. Uh, can you see the image here? We do. Do you see uh, the orange uh, areas represent Hindu dominated areas? The blue ones, the, the purple ones represent Christian dominated areas. And there are a few scatterings of, you know, um, Muslim dominated areas, mainly in Assam, which is a different discussion altogether. There's been a lot of debate about Bangladeshi immigration. Uh, illegal immigration from Bangladesh and what, whatnot. But the focus today is on this eastern frontier, the border area uh, with Myanmar and China. So, you know, this is the status today. Do you know what it was 100 years ago? Just 100 years ago, or let's say even before independence, what All was Hindu. the percentage of Christian population? No, but what was the percentage of Christian population here? Any guesses? To what I know, Christianity possibly arrived in, arrived in uh, at least in this part of the world or this mm -hmm. part of India, somewhere in the later part of 19th century. When I say yes. later, extreme late part of 19th century. Yes. And, 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 and when, as, a, as in when you sh just showed the map, the one question that basically, you know, uh, arose in my mind, arised in my mind was the entire Southeast Asia. I mean, if you just look at the Northeast India, it's basically nothing but possibly an extension of Southeast Asia. The entire Southeast Asia still is Buddhist. Uh, I think Buddhism is the, is the primary religion. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's still surprising to see, you know, those many, um, I mean, so many areas where you have Christian Christianity as a dominant religion. Well, we should thank our British, uh, our former British colonizers mm -hmm. for this wonderful demographic uh, change. You know mm -hmm. why this happened? Because if you look at this part, these are all the plains, the plains surrounding the Brahmaputra River, but these are all hilly areas. So what mm -hmm. used to happen until the late 19th century was, or let's say middle of 19th century was uh, a lot of these tribes living here, all of them were tribes, right? They followed different religions, a mostly animistic uh, shamanistic faiths. Mm -hmm. um, they all used to descend. They, they, hardly anything grows here, right? I, I mean, these are dense forests, but there's nothing in terms of agriculture here. So all these people uh, or people from here used to go on raids into the into the plains, plunder those regions, maybe kill a few, kill off a few, and then go back, vanish back into the into the forest. So this is what used to happen. Now the British, incidentally, had a lot of investments in Assam mainly the tea plantations and whatnot. And they were interested in protecting uh, this region. So what happened was, you know, they tried to go in militarily and take control of these areas and subjugate the populations. It didn't work. It failed miserably. There is 
if i remember there is also a british naga war or something like that that happened in the uh, hmm. the early part of 19th century Thank so you. military campaigns in this area were uh, basically uh, uh, fruitless again if you look at the naxal violence right the naxals have been relatively more successful at least in the initial phase because they know better about the terrain the same uh, the british also faced the same problem they couldn't uh, subjugate the population so then the british devised a counter measure they started inserting christian missionaries of different denominations into these areas try and convert the population so that at least if not if not militarily at least by mind they would be controlled and this is what happened but you know even if you look at the 1911 census uh the percentage of christian population in these areas was about 1% not more than 2 at most in most most places abhi kitna abhi kitna in these areas they dominate sold they dominated predominantly it's in the 80s and 90s 80s and 90s right so there are two things to take note of here we should definitely thank our british colonizers for inserting uh, leading us to this new light called christianity and the second thing would be that the success of governments and after independence have done nothing to stem the uh, to stem the flow towards uh, uh, towards christianity basically they didn't do anything to prevent the conversions they just turned a blind eye to it okay for various reasons for electoral gains for whatever reasons they just turned a blind eye much like they did with infrastructure in these areas now we know who was in power for most of the period oh yeah right yeah um, no, not surprised yeah so what you're seeing today is partly attributable to the deepening demographic religious religio demographic divide in this area now let's take a close look at manipur so manipur is this place uh, and i provided a deeper uh, a, 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 a zoomed in overview of manipur now the reason you know have you ever wondered why it's actually called manipur what does money mean no. what is money in sanskrit or any indian languages it's a diamond it's a gem oh okay so manipur is actually called such because it resembles a gem where the surrounding areas are hilly and in the middle you have the imphal valley which is which is flat so it resembles a gem hmm. hence the name manipur theek hai nice. now <clears throat> manipur has three main ethnicities today the the middle part is dominated where imphal is you know lies uh, uh, is dominated by what are called the metis theek hai we'll come to that in the next slide what about the north part these are the nagas okay mm-hmm. and the south is where the kukis are concentrated theek hai so the nagas and kukis predominantly are based in the hilly regions whereas the metis are fo- uh, concentrated more in the infal valley okay and in if i'm looking at that uh, northeast map is and so when i'm looking at that r- patch of r- orange in that uh, green, purple yeah. that's manipur correct yeah Yes, yes. So this, Manipur this, is the outlier is where Manipur. there is a Hindu, Muslim, the other, everything else is Christianity, yeah. but Manipur has this split. Yes, right. yes. Nagaland is even more Christianized. Yes, All the Nagar tribes. Yes. So this is the this is the uh, demographic uh, division in Manipur, at least when you look at it in a on a ge- in geographic terms. Now tell me one thing, the media has been focused on this. current trade which is occurring between the metes and the cookies theek hai mm-hmm. nobody is questioning why the nagas are not joining the the the, the riots i mean they are also living in the hilly areas right why aren't they taking part something That's to awesome. keep in mind theek hai we'll we'll come to that now basically you can t- divide manipur into two parts one is the valley districts again right and the hilly districts again see the nagas naga areas are also covered under the hill districts ठीक है so just keep this in mind now if you look at the metes the metes are actually the the so called manipuris how old is the mete culture it's 2000 years old 
2000. The earliest evidence of mate is stems back from 2000 years old. And look where the mate population is scattered. I mean, obviously, there's a big concentration in Manipur, but there are mates in other areas as well. Okay, spanning from uh, Burma all the way up to Bhutan. So they number about 2 million in population, where almost 80 85% of them are based in Manipur. And in fact, Mete, I found out, was one of the officially recognized, the Mete language. It's actually called Manipuri unofficially. Mm -hmm. okay? Manipuri is nothing but Manipuri is a language. You see the script here. And Manipuri is the state language of Manipur. So Mete language is actually the state language of Manipur. And it is one of the official languages under the Indian constitution. True. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> what happened was at the time of independence, the Metes are actually applied for ST status. Okay, mm -hmm. but they were not. They were uh, they had tribal status until 1949, which is when Manipur, you know, was under a king, much like other princely states. Correct. But then, when when the state merged with India, I've just provided a snapshot from Wikipedia. They lost that status. Instead, what they were categorized as, they were either categorized as, uh, most most of them were actually categorized as OBCs. Okay? So, what does that do? Uh, if you compare this with the cookies, now these are the cookies. So, if you just look at their costumes, they are basically uh, tribal people. Well, the natives are actually, in a way, tribal as well. But, you know, uh, the, the cookies are more more tribalistic in nature, their practices are more tribalistic. They in fact follow, before Christianity came, they, they, were, they, they followed a, a lot of animistic religions. They, they actually believed in head hunting and all that, all those sorts of rituals. Now look at the distribution of uh, the, uh, the cookies uh, within India and uh, elsewhere. So you see, unlike the, unlike the Metes who are much more spread out, you see that the cookies are much more concentrated. Mm. Okay. Now I said Metes have a history dating back from 2000 years. How old is the cookie history, do you think? It's the last 50 to 100 years. It's actually about 250 years old. The term cookie was actually yeah. coined by, uh, I think, an, uh, a British pastor or a British lawmaker, some British mm. civil servant in 1777. Okay. And cookie, the cookies are, are actually just a, it's just a term to common, to commonly referred to various tribes pop, inhabiting this area. So unlike the Métis who have, who have uh, uh, a culture, who have uh, a broad history, and in fact, the Métis are Hindus. I forgot to add this. Before Hinduism came about, uh, they followed a religion called Sanamahism. Mm -hmm. Then what happened was there was an influx of Brahmins from other parts of India into Manipur, mm -hmm. and slowly they became Vaishnavites. So today's Maitis, they follow a, a, a version of Vaishnavism, Hinduism, basically. Okay. The Kukis, they have, they have, they, they are much more diverse. They don't have anything common per se. Some in in some cases, the languages are so different from each other. So tribes have you know various dialects. In some cases, the languages are, are so different that they cannot understand each other. Okay. And there is no history beyond 250 years that mentions cookies. Cookies was a term coined by the British. And after independence, the cookies uh, are covered under Article 371C. Now, all of us have been hearing about Article 370, 370. Mm -hmm. because of Kashmir. But you know, there's also an Article 371 which has separate chapters for different states, out of which <clears throat> Article 371C pertains to Manipur. So what does it say? The president may provide for the constitution of a committee uh, of elected members only from the hilly areas in the assembly and entrust special responsibility to the governor to ensure its proper functioning. So one thing is the Metes are considered OBCs. They are confined to the valley. The cookies are spread out in the southern part mm -hmm. of Manipur in the hilly areas. They are categorized as scheduled tribes and they are protected under Article 371C. Bizarre. Okay. 
Disaster. So what is going on here? What is going on in the uh, as far as the riots are concerned? So what happened was I think in May uh, the Manipur High Court passed an order stating that the Metes had been discriminated against, and therefore they should also be categorized as scheduled tribes. Now, what did this do? This caused an immediate turmoil amongst the other minorities uh, living in the hilly regions, and. Immediately in, in the following weeks, the, the cookies took up arms and went on a rampage against the Metes who were living in these areas. You know, there's a place called uh, Churchandpur, or I forget the actual name, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it, it lies somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you have it, Churchandapur. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they drew away all the uh, Metes that were living there into the valley and other, other places. Now, their worry, their complaint is that. Uh, if the Metes are given ST status, then there will be more competition for government jobs. Um, there will be more, um, th 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 there's also a complaint that they already have greater representation in the Manipur Assembly, the Metes. So therefore the Kukis complain that they will be, uh, they will face even more discrimination. They will lose out on more opportunities if the Metes are given ST status. Now, while that is true, which also points to the sorry state of economic affairs in Manipur, like there's no industry, there's no economy there, thriving economy there, which is also contributing to this problem. Okay, but is that, are those reasons justified? Um, do those reasons justify the cookies going on a rampage against the natives? And my guess is no, because I looked further uh, to see what is the wealth distribution in Manipur. I got this out of a research paper that was published recently. Look at the uh, look at this map again of Manipur, and the poverty index shows how different districts in Manipur fare against each other. So see, you have the key here. So a low score points to less poverty in those areas. Okay, the more yellow it is, the le the less poor uh, the less poor the area is. Which area is more poor? It's Chandel. The Nagas are pretty well off. Right. In fact, this part of uh, this Naga area is actually doing much better than even Imphal. Okay. So that maybe partly explains why the Nagas haven't really entered into the into the fray. But look at Ch Chur Ch Churchanpur. It is also relatively well off. So definitely, economic reasons are not driving this this whole thing. That you know. Uh, that maybe people lose out on economic opportunities as a result of this change in the so it's status. It's a very small part of it, maybe. Yeah, but again, I'm I'm not saying uh, nothing is monocausal, like I said before. But po poverty doesn't explain what's going on here. Now the cookies have also been uh, part of a wider insurgency uh, for this, for, uh, and there is this movement uh, in favor of. Uh, what is called cookie land. I don't know if you have heard that. So the green area here represents the no. dream of cookie land by some of the militant groups active in that area. Okay, so remember one thing. When the ST status is affecting both Nagas and cookies, why are the cookies only interested in this whole thing? Like on, on paper, both Nagas and cookies oppose the demand for ST status. They have verbally opposed it, the Nagas too. So why are only the cookies taking up arms? Any guesses? Sort of, you you know, even the Nagas and cookies have fought each other. If you look, if you go, go a bit mm -hmm. in the past, even the Nagas and cookies have been involved in, in skirmishes and many people have been killed. The main reason is poppy, opium mm -hmm. cultivation. So this is, uh, a, uh, a map showing areas where poppy or opium has been cultivated in Myanmar. Do you see this region here? It borders two different areas. One on the, uh, here there is a lot of cultivation, but look, it's bordering uh, Manipur on the north and Mizoram on the, on the yeah. west, right? And there, there, there is documented evidence that there is a lot of poppy cultivation in the Kuki areas in Manipur and Mizoram. Not surprised. So what is, yeah. <clears throat> One thing I forgot to add, by the way, is 
under the current um, status quo, uh, because the metes have a, uh, only OBC status, uh, they are forbidden from purchasing land in the nearby hilly areas. Whereas because the cookies have ST status, they can not only purchase land here, they are also allowed to purchase land in the valley. So it's a one sided so Wait, wait. Issue. Are you saying Hindu metes cannot purchase land yes. outside the valley? No. But the Christian cookies who yes. also have the land status in the valley can come and go to him fallen by the land. Yes. Yes. What a Bizarre. Which is why you also you have a lot of cookie settlements even within the valley. They are not that many, but there are a few, there are scatterings of cookie settlements in, even within the valley. Okay, so this so, is the so sorry here, state the, of here the point, uh, Arvind. Yeah, Arvind, here the point is you know uh, again something to be noted. I think this law was passed somewhere in 1960 or 1961. So this is a typical you know the politics of Congress. The I mean the word which kind of became very famous at least since the time BJP has come in, the politics of appeasement. It's a, it's a prime example of it. I mean, the, uh, the people, Maitis, um, who were in majority, I think 1960, they, sh they would have been majority right now. As per the 20, uh, 2011 census, they no more, are, no more are in majority. Christians are in majority as far as relig religious demographics is concerned. So a group an ethnic group which was in majority then was not allowed to purchase land due to whatever reason. I mean, as per as per this, this uh, you know the land act that I spoke about, it's a typical example of an, another you know another example of Congress uh, uh, politics of appeasement. So yeah, just one yeah. point that, that mm. I just wanted. To mm. Yeah. So let, going back to the last slide. So again, you know we all know that Myanmar the the junta that is ruling Myanmar right now, or has been ruling for the last 50, 60 years, it mm -hmm. finances a, a lot of its activities through opium trade. Okay, many of them, many of us don't know this. Look at the map on the right. Okay. Unlike, um, contrary to popular uh, opinion that the junta controls most of Myanmar, the rea reality is there's a, there are a lot of insurgencies uh, opposed to the junta, junta even, in, even within Myanmar, okay? Uh, and most of these insurgencies border uh, India. So what does the junta do? They have these uh, informal alliances or agreements with some of these insurgent groups that, you know, we let you be, but, you know, you, you in return, you, you cultivate poppy mm. and you give us a share of the profits. So this is the arrangement that has been put in place by by the junta, the Myanmarese junta, and the insurgent groups uh, active along the Indian border. Now, what is happening is it's easier, easy to connect the dots. With the passing of this law, if in if the Hindu metes sorry, which law are you saying? Three seventy one? No, no, no. If with the change no, in the, the new law, uh, the new law that was passed. Sorry, I am I'm not familiar. What is the new law? Can one of you tell me that? So the new law like is the, the the high court oh, of Manipur. Oh, the status, the, the status that you get yeah, 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 yeah. scheduled tribe. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So once metis are now, if if once metis are recognized as scheduled tribes, mm -hmm. then they are technically allowed to purchase land outside the valley as well. And then right? they could go and purchase and the this has, and net to the yeah, border. Yeah, and this has yeah. So if you connect the distribution of nagas, cookies, and metis here to this map. See where poppy cultivation is most active. Look at the density here. You see, it's bordering the areas where mm -hmm. cookies are highly concentrated. So again, economics is the best explanation here. The cookies fear that with the metes coming in, their trades, their, their, their cultivation and their you know uh, supply chains might be disrupted. Uh, and, and Myanmar would be well, afraid as well because these guys come in, my trade is getting impacted because Exactly. I have these militia, no, the militia who's you know working with these cookies and you know having that you know, trade. Absolutely. So, I, so you I, if see... I'm a Myanmar guy, I have a very vested interest in saying ki yaar, aag lagate hain, taki ye aag India mein bujhe, and then I'm well, I'm saying Myanmar as a militants here. Yes. Um, I mean, th this is being th this is being organized in a very uh, structured way, right? This whole riot thing. Uh, 
and obviously there is some foreign hand and there is some very good level of organization that is behind these rights yeah. and you can connect the dots based on these figures you now what happened recently in the last two days find an organized riot versus a you know a, okay. a disorganized riot chaos yeah and this one's not looking chaos. like a disorganized one no 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 and look if you follow the news from the last two days what happened uh, there was news trickling down saying that metes living in mizoram they're also threatened mm -hmm. look at how many uh, metes are living in mizoram less than 2 3000 individuals even these guys are being threatened why it is just a, a trailer of things to come the cookies who also dominate in mizoram want to you know continue cultivating opium for obviously profit motives and they see any other ethnic group as a threat to what they are able to do at, at least this is what uh seem this is what the data seems to suggest so uh, uh, yeah yeah i mean anandan so this is reminding me of kashmir of <laughs> older times where hindus in kashmir were thrown out and you know made that and the it has shades the, of it. The sympathies with the Muslims there, and then there's you have the Huriyat, and then Pakistan. Mujhe yeah. wohi lag I mean, I mean, I'm not fully into the. I mean, I'm I'm learning a lot here, but this shades reminds me of what happened with Article 370 and the isolation Congress has done with them. It does have shades. Dude, it does have shades. Any insurgency, any insurgency. Look at look at it the world over. Look at the contrast in Nicaragua. Look at the the FARC rebels in Colombia, look at uh, the African insurgencies, the civil wars there. You cannot fund the war without finance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot, you need to fund the war in some way, right? That's the that's the right way to put it. How are you going to finance it? I mean, there, there's no there's no industry here. It's not like the, the rebels here are running factories that are churning out some useful products, maybe MacBooks or iPhones that are able to turn them a profit. They obviously turn to the most easy and viable commodity that they can sell in the informal market, which are drugs. How are the Taliban uh, funding themselves through puppy trade? So, so I have two questions to both of you. I mean, Anand, this this is amazing work here. So, why is media not telling the story, and what is BJP doing here? Well. Uh, I wouldn't jump the gun and say that the BJP is not doing anything. Look, I mean, these are not events that you can turn over in, in a day or two. They take True. time. But look, one thing is, uh, was our intelligence apparatus in those areas really good enough to anticipate the fallout? I'm not sure that it was really good enough. Again, we think we tend to think of intelligence as these, as these lethal agencies, but intelligence are also manned by government servants. So you can see the quality of <laughs> how they work. Um, and secondly, let's wait for a few more weeks and see if uh, there are any there is any change in the in the ground situation. Um, I hope there is because if it, if 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 things don't change uh, and continue the way they are right now, I think you know uh, we should be really concerned. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I, mean, uh, I think the other, I think yeah. the other, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Saurav. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so Anand just made a, made a, a right point. I think things, uh, I think the government is doing enough. Uh, I think government possibly is not, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we did have an offline conversation with it. I, I think they're just not handling certain situations well. As far as the internal politics of Manipur is concerned, there have there been certain uh, uh, you know areas where I think BJP could have done better. You know, on the very day I think it was third May, if I'm right, the first week of May when this violence kind of broke out. I think the moment was there. You know that you know Prime Minister could have come on the national TV and kind of spoken about it. I'm not saying you know this could have you know made a huge amount of difference. But at least the the politics of optics, you know, could have been taken care of. You know, we are in the year of elections. No one kind of speaks about, you know, the kind of development that BJP has done. I mean, I, I agree with, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, Anand just, you know, spoke about this. Very little that has happened in Manipur or for a matter of fact, in the, in the entire Northeast for the last 70, 75 years. But 
this government you know made was trying to you know shift that uh, trying to you know certain make certain moves as far as you know the infra story in the entire northeast region is concerned and there were certain moments you know with respect to that one thing that this particular government kind of lacks and this is not only in the entire manipur story but in various other you know uh, things that have kind of broken down in the past has been you know they don't tackle the situation then and there again i think there have been you know certain uh, events where it gives an indication they let things simmer um uh, another thing i think anand just made a right point there is there are certain external uh, you know parties which are involved here uh, just to give an example i think couple of days back this entire news which kind of broke out in the media indian media as well as western media was this uh, you know two women being paraded mm-hmm. in in a certain village now this particular video was basically captured i think two months back now what was the point you know what was the intent of releasing it now and the whole point any you know i i i believe in free speech i believe in you know making sure uh, you know uh, certain rights of individuals are not taken away now when the west cries about you know the internet being switched off for x amount of days you know uh, in the in certain regions we had scenario in jammu kashmir now we have the scenario here as well when as soon as, as, soon as the riot broke out i think the indian government passed the i mean they they passed this particular thing that you know internet internet is going to be you know turned off for x number of days but as soon as the internet was turned on and you saw what happened so there is i mean the point that i basically wanted to get get to was the things were improving on the ground and this is what i get to know from certain friends of mine who are there uh not exactly in manipur but in nagaland uh so the things were improving to what i know but it is just that there there is certain amount of you know external hand holding which is being done uh, to a certain group uh so there is this organization for sure which is you know making sure the things don't settle down and uh, and that's that's where we are i mean we 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 had this story coming out uh, you know couple of days back i mean i just spoke about it you know couple of women being paraded you know uh, naked after that news has broken down there are again news of you know uh, rapes being done on um, few other women so uh, it's a it's a very difficult situation for for this government and another another point which you know anand uh, you know highlighted as far as this area is not difficult it, it is very difficult to manage uh, you know when anand was kind of talking about the entire entire regional demographics of manipur when the cookies are you know have the control over the hills the hills are very very difficult to manage even for an army it is very difficult to manage get up get you know get certain amount of intelligence here so it's a it's a it's it's a nightmare for a for the for for the government to to have a control on and no wonder why the entire northeast has been sort of a burning story for 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 the uh, for for india for almost 70 to 75 years all that i basically hope for you know army army kind of takes over uh, you know i'm not really sure if uh, any changes would be brought in as far as you know making sure uh, the current government Uh, which is again uh, you know ruled by bjp that is thrown out or there is government rule or there is a president rule which is implemented in uh, in this particular state i'm not really sure what's going to happen but all that we can basically hope for is to army to you know take control of the situation and maybe in a matter of few days or months this uh, uh, this volatile situation that we have right now kind of you know dies down else i think you know this is going to be a bad story for uh, bjp Uh, as we head to 2024 elections i think bjp should fire their uh, communications person public media relations communications person because look I, they don't I, understand i mean yeah, they, I think, despite doing all the good work the perception abroad is oh hindus are burning christians 
and the, the reality is opposite and oh the cookies are suffering and women are paraded and you know this is what happens in oppressed lands of you know bjp world the reality is actually opposite and you don't know how to you know manage the op- i think you called out right the optics manage karna nahi aata and this is not the first time pa nrc shaheen bag farm protests this one they couldn't control riots in delhi do you expect them to control it in <laughs> far away <laughs> yeah this is two two aspects a you don't know how to communicate your optics you have done good work on infrastructure you don't know how to communicate b you can't control your riots what is amit shah doing i mean yes i mean bjp has done enough but has they done enough to control the riots are we saying that we can't control riots in in in, in an organized manner and and we let it happen simmer it and then break it down and then make it international news Let I'm fail to understand. Maybe we can that. do an episode on this. No, oh, no. Let, we'll do an episode probably on this. Let us take a shot at uh, the the quality of judges, the quantity and quality of judges and police services in India. Okay. Yeah. Let us do on that. First thing, even before you initiate, uh, you know, first of all, to to control something, you need to have enough police forces. we don't invest in police forces we don't True. invest in judges even in a populous state like uttar pradesh we don't uh, we don't institute uh, one third of the judges even though they are sanctioned there is budget for having a few 150 or uh, 200 judges but only two thirds of those posts are filled why abhi india mein lawyers ki kami hai kya why so obviously there is something that the government thinks it is doing right which we don't know but i see this is one of the reasons why uh, um things unfolding in india make still make me pessimistic i mean we all talk about modi visiting abroad and doing all these uh, fanfare uh, uh, meetings and what not <clears throat> international mein modi ka image bahut acha but ground mein kuch kuch halat nahi badal raha hai yaar The, the 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 courts still function as shit the police no abi ab even today when there is a when, when there is a quarrel when there is something when, when there is some kind of an issue you'd never think about going to the police yeah yeah anand that's a has yeah, your uh, possibly as a trust topic. in the police force yeah as your trust yeah, the in state the state capacity i mean the state capacity on police in the And the one whole, is state capacity uh, the, the other is state quality third is state intention all of that all three It's are probably all a separate topic for us to deal not just yeah. manipur that's all over india wide it's coming back to manipur yeah. here i mean i have a question to both of you and this, this is like me being because i i'm still learning all of this when well, you just shared right maithe is 2000 years history and cookies 250 years and and on a sort of you said politics of appeasement by nehru 61 may law aaya so two questions if can bjp or can president rule if their president rules can they abrogate 370 like they did uh, 371 like they did 370 and make provisions to add the maithe status there can that be done by by the government or the president that's question one but the question what will two, help here how will yeah go on yeah and, and i'll finish my question two and i'll get back to the question one and the question two was 75 years stay i mean we know this now for the fact right since the congress has taken since 47 till 2014 where the northeast was effectively cut off from the rest of india in terms of development in terms of growth i mean you 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 have those are ye chinki aaye hain you know you have the stereotypes you know we we also make them this thing for 75 years this place has been burning be it ulfa militants in 90s this is not new it happened in 2016 this happened in uh 2008 9 ye naya nahi hai why is it for 75 years the whole media was quiet i'm talking the media angle here and now just because there's a bjp government then oh this is like oh my god the manipur is broken the burning can government do anything on 371 and the media here you no know, after 75 years this is not new why are they make two questions sir to both of you you want to go first uh Yeah sorry what was your first question Yeah the first question is can can government and the president rule do abrogate any, any uh, provisions to 371 like they did for No 370? I don't would that have impact see, I, the status of this place 
I don't see the point of you know having president's rule or uh, doing any legal change, regulatory change, because see what is the key fundamental problem affecting the northeast? There are no economic opportunities, which is also the reason why so many people immigrate outside to other parts of India from there, right? Is it is the northeast resource poor? No, no it is not, right? Are we better off? Have we been better off by staving off the northeast of resources and infrastructure development? We have not. Uh, the answer is no. Right? China has been doing what it has always wanted to do, regardless of whether there was infrastructure here or not. So, the first thing which we need to focus is improving the economic uh, uh, environment there, providing jobs, uh, encouraging into industries to go there. And set up shop with with relevant policies, right? If you can create an SEZ somewhere in Maharashtra or uh, Gujarat, why don't you create S SEZs there? Why don't you mm -hmm. employ uh, uh, create opportunities for the employment of people? We don't do that. Take care. Once you start creating economic opportunities, people will forget if they are SCs or OBCs. Or uh, let me tell you one thing: if you go to Kerala. Even today, people are so highly educated um, uh, that, you know, uh, yeah, when they have right. to work together, they don't really bother if they are working with somebody of the other religion, of a different religion. Why? One thing is the mindset. Mm -hmm. Second thing, when we go abroad, we don't differentiate b between uh, castes and religions. Generally, we are okay. We do with the language Magar, level. Oh, two Hindu, two Pakistan, we do it. Tamil, yeah, yeah. Tamil, Tamil, Tamil. I mean, there are always there are always bad apples everywhere. But all I'm saying is, when mind khali hai, tab ye sab issues pada hote hain. Theek hai, ye sab important lagne lagte hain. If the youth in these areas is having good economic opportunities and they are really happy. Why will they go on the rampage against each other? Why would they be at each other's necks? It's fundamentals, first principles. Yeah. So my and my next question, I'll repeat that again. Uh, was uh, sort of an, uh, this is happening? Seventy-five years in Northeast was cut off, right? For seven, mm -hmm. 60, of, of of the of that majority was Congress era. So how is it that left liberals, media, news have covered Manipur like? It's the world's worst thing ever happened, but and this has happened before. And and how is opposition making this such a hue and cry out of this, man, and the media making hue and cry of this when this has been burning for seventy five years? It's not burning new. I mean, I think opposition is doing what the opposition is going to do. I think if BJP possibly was in, you know, Congress, they would, shoes, have, they the they would have they would have done 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 the same, the same classic thing. opposition opposition politics, one on one. Um. I think uh, one thing that, uh, you know, I was just thinking when Alan was talking about uh, uh, about the economic, uh, you know, if we can bring economics, uh, economic, uh, some amount of economic activity in Manipur. Uh, I think this is also an example when you, you know, when you, you, you stated about 75 years, I know cookies have been in India for for hundreds of years, and there are certain indigenous cookies who are part of India through and through. But this is what happens when you normalize, you know, certain change in demographics, and you turn a bl blind eye. This has happened in Jammu Kashmir, and now this is happening in Manipur. I think what's going to happen is, uh, I think that as we speak, there is news floating <clears throat> around that Maitis have. My thesis have already started to move to Mizoram. I think knowing um, knowing Maitis, I think they possibly are going to calm down maybe in a matter of few days. And the the uh, the abrogation of Article Three Seventy One is not going to go away. We're going to still have those you know land laws which we had in nineteen sixties. And knowing this particular government. The way they basically acted during the NCC, CA, and farm laws, where they basically surrendered to rioters, I see that happening here again. I don't think so. They they have the courage right now, just before 2024 elections. I mean, it, I mean, the scenario could have been a little different if it was 2022. 
I I see the government, you know, backing down on this particular law, uh, which they tried uh, to propose a couple of months back. And I think uh, it's, it's going to be, you know, square one where, where we were, right? I mean, uh, two to three months back. Uh, hmm. So you, you just might see a slow migration of Metis to different states of uh, Northeast or some other states within India. Uh, and and the, 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 the other, uh, you know, I wouldn't say uh, a, a, a terrifying part though, but the Metis in terms of percentage as far as Manipur is concerned, Metis represent Manipur. Right, I mean it's two thousand years uh, old. I mean we, we just you know spoke about it. Now they represent forty one percent of entire Manipur. You gotta be seeing something similar to what basically happened in Jammu Kashmir. Repeating here again, <coughs> I know this is what seven twenty third <coughs> July, maybe two years down the line when we you know if we ever have a discussion on this, you gonna be talking about you know the mass mass migration of uh, Maitis. Uh, possibly in the days to come. I mean, unless and until the government uh, acts tough, maybe if this government get, gets selected in 2024, along with the state, uh, uh, you know, state government, which currently is BJP, you might have some sort of changes, some side, some some sort of doggedness, uh, dogged approach, as far as passing this law is concerned. But right now, since we have uh, you know elections uh, staring at us, uh, staring at us. In 2024, I don't see, you know, government, uh, you know, taking any tough measures. Uh, I mean, that's my mm. take. Uh, it might be yeah. completely different. But, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very disappointed with the way the media has covered this and the way the global media is covering this. They are just painting a very wrong picture of, you know, this thing is. By the way, I just want to share, you know, Anand, you were talking about the whole poppy cultivation. Star Boy years on Twitter is, is one of the followed accounts who actually dissects like like you in this specific mm-hmm. Also was mentioning he shared this article of Jimmy Levion. Um, these are says, correlated. These are correlated. And I think what you were alluding to is what it is the brain scene is the same of Manipur on March 18th says that I'm going to act up on poppy farmers three months back, and three months later, you know, we are seeing something else on the news. So I thought, uh, I thought that was very interesting. You know, when you brought up that that you know, this is a very coordinated attack against the India. I mean, I think. I think Indians should realize that this is a coordinated against again attack against India and Hindus in that part of the region, and we should not get swayed by the media what they say because you know the media in our country is very very sensationalistic. They are not digging information and understanding the realities and just are focusing on oh okay, rape ho raha hai kya kar? no chastisizing oh galat ho raha hai and all that, but the reality is. Dig a little deeper and understand why it is happening, and they're not they're not understanding, or they're they're failing to report that part. And that's our our intention through this channel is really just try to uncover that and just give that information to our audiences, trying to say, look, there's a there's something else going on in Manipur which you should know before you make some assumptions about BJP, the Congress, yeah. Christians, Hindus, and yeah. Hindu. yeah. For me to end this, uh, let me just add a final point. Look. The media, especially that the, the one that functions in a capitalistic world, is also driven by profits. So they, they go where the money goes. So there is definitely uh, some greater funding coming from the leftist parties, uh, maybe the Congress and affiliated parties, uh, that is driving all this uh, negative uh, campaign against uh, the current government. Now, incidentally, the current chief minister of Manipur is also from the BJP. So naturally, the 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 real target of this extensive media coverage of the Manipur riots is not just the uh, him, but it's actually Mr. Modi and the BJP. Uh, so maybe there is something that the BJP is not doing right to change this image that the opposition is doing. But what else can the opposition do? They have they are dealing with a political situation where they are close to becoming irrelevant, Absolutely. and they have no issues to talk about. They have no solutions to offer that is better than what the BJP is currently offering or promising to do. So what do you do? You attack 
on these sort of issues. You create issues in the first case, and then you attack the government for not being able to act on them. So I think it's a bit of both. Now, who are the parties involved? Who is funding them? We all know the sources. We don't have to repeat them here. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me just add this. You know, incidentally, I was very surprised uh, a few days ago when I went on the CNN website. Uh, this was like one or two days after, you know, the the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. case on affirmative action went through. And I was hoping to read something about it. Guess what? There was no mention of affirmative action on CNN's website. But what was it covering on the front page? Uh, Manipur riots. Manipur riots. So I'm actually glad that the CNN is so interested in what's happening in every nook and corner of India. Finally, you know, we have the world media uh, having so much attention uh, on things happening in the East. You see this one. This is Guardian. Guardian doing this yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Anand, you look at this one. How did the conflict begin? Okay, not why. How has violence unfolded? You know, they are talking villages when more than 250 churches belonging to Kuki were, were destroyed. Yes, yes, yes. Selective. They're not talking this what has been. This is a very selective one. When a violence happens, the other side also is destroyed, right? They're not talking about that. Yes, 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 yes. As fake news and misinformation signal claiming Meiti women have been raped and killed by it was reported that Kuki women were targeted in revenge attacks. There has been several reports of beheading, okay? And then it says, how has government responded? Nowhere in this has they talked why this has happened. No, and let me ask you, where it... are the sources? So, see, if, first and foremost, to all viewers uh, and even to us, remember one thing, any news article that says, according to sources in the text, don't read it. Don't believe what they say. Even I can produce some news and say, according to sources, this is that, that, that this. Put references. Where did you get that information from? Are you presenting both sides of the story? Right? Look now, we are not saying that the cookies are wrong and the mates no, are No, we're right. not saying that. We're, we are saying that present both the stories and let the audience decide what they want, what, what they yeah. outlet them. Hannah Alice yeah. Peterson is in Delhi, apparently. Uh, she's a Guardian correspondent. And she now puts up this one, which is a day later, which is yesterday's news. It says, four women arrested after women stripped naked and paraded. It doesn't tell what women, which which you are arrested, doesn't give that one. Because, and, and just because makes obviously it. Because she's not interested in that. She's not correct. interested in that. She's not interested in that. And that or she doesn't have enough gray, gray cells to even go ahead and go, go further and investigate that story. Maybe her bosses don't like her uh, going that far. Who knows? Yeah, I so now the, the whole media. story has been, media has been springing this as how women are unsafe in Manipur, how women are unsafe in the BJP ground. Yeah, Seven. absolutely. Why don't they do the same thing in a, in a Congress-dominated state? Did you see that news about uh, the, the Rajasthan? Rajasthan lawmaker, yeah. the, minister? the minister? What happened? He raised the same issue saying that, and he's a Congress guy, by the way. So he said, what about the women, uh, the violence against women, the high rates of crime against women in, in Rajasthan? What happened? Next minute, he was he was sacked. So much Is, of, did, uh, did anybody cover that? You know? And, and, and yeah, you, you look at the Guardian covering this one, because obviously this is a good soundbite for them. The Supreme Court yeah. demanded that the government get the situation under control in Manipur, stating, we will take action if you don't. Yes, yes, absolutely. I believe them. Yeah. So, see, yeah. See the, see the, the, yeah, I think the problem, the, the, problem, the problem with the Indian media is, and the... Uh, the, the Godi media, as they call, right? They are not talking about it. They are not talking about yeah. it. I basically watched uh, what is this, Rajat? Rajat? Uh, yeah. um, I forgot the name of the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I possibly watched it for three, four hours, but there was not a there was not even a coverage of Rajat right, the entire. And I think they no are missing the trick here. They are missing the trick here because. If you don't and, tell it, 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 it shows that you are guilty. Right. Or it shows right. that and you, if, you are hiding. And if they yeah. are showing Look. it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, please. I thought you were. Yeah, and if they are showing it, they're showing in, showing only one side of the story. The And if, uh, you know, there are certain media agencies who don't like Modi, they are only talking about, let's say, the cookies. They are not even talking about the Metis. They are bringing in, you know, cookies rep representatives, 
talking, you know, what are the kind of challenges and issues that they are basically facing for the meetings, but there is no representation of meetings, you know, yeah. in any of the in any of those channels. So I think there is two facedness. And as far as the Western media is concerned, I mean, this particular violence erupted almost at the very same time as the France violence, right? And we spoke about the France violence in detail. I know. Did CNN did CNN cover the France violence in its front page? I didn't see it. What does Manipur form as far as, you know, <laughs> even if I have to talk about population as well as the area of India is concerned, you can't generalize India with Manipur as showing Manipur as an example, but Manipur is in the headlines. Yeah. I mean, guys, I, I, have, I have, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have, have to leave, yeah, but let me yeah. make one yeah, we're final point. Now, yeah. Look, look to, to anybody watching this video and if they are Indian or uh, from the East, I'm just going to tell you one thing. Gora kya sochta hai, uske baare mein koi farak, koi farak ne padta hai. Tumhe pata hai, um, after this Chandrayaan launch, or whenever India right. launches a new uh, satellite, I always get these uh, dumb questions, like why can't India spend uh, money on its poor rather than yeah, spend money on so. satellites? Absolutely. So moments. if people, you know, if, if the media is catering to people, these kind of people, I don't want to spend my time explaining to these to these idiots That's why true. a space program Absolutely. really matters, right? So, you know, who cares what the West thinks? Absolutely. Who cares? I mean, I, and I think it's showing how hollow the Western media in general, the, the mainstream media has become in terms of first principles of journalism. And so we'll end it with that. And it is this media that is going to bring them down in, in due course. Remember, Absolutely, and I words. think that that is that is the future of uh, future of media yeah. in terms of citizen journalism and YouTube yeah. and Twitter and all of the social media. All right, we'll end it here. Great conversation, guys. Uh, but I hope our audience will you liked it. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Uh, please share it with your friends and family. We are just starting here. There is so much we are going to talk about in the future. We are here to try and share our common man's view to you know on the on the day topics trying to give you the perspective what mainstream media is today actually missing, giving that balanced view, giving the broad sides of the view, giving the historical perspective. So please be, really like that video. It takes only 10 seconds. Please subscribe and please share. Thank you, everyone. We will talk again later.